Hello, welcome again to another week of Worldviews at War. This week, we're going to talk about vaccines. And if you are in sin, (laughs) if you don't get a vaccine, the coronavirus vaccine. Or loving your neighbor. Right, or loving your neighbor. Yeah. Or a racist. Right. What? Right, a racist. Not a rapist, a racist. So that's that's a thing now? It is a thing. I mean, we, so just to set some context here, we are going to talk about this subject because I got in a bit of a kerfuffle on social media. Is that a word? A kerfuffle. It is. It is. It is. It's a great word. Oh, okay. It's an old, it's an old word. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it's an, it's an old word. Kerfuffle. So I got into a bit of a joust with a, um, a pastor who I went through seminary with because he posted this David French article that basically says that you have a spiritual problem if you don't get the coronavirus vaccine. And wow. he basically called somebody else out like they were in sin. And I so and I even confirmed it. I'm like, are you saying he's in sin if he doesn't get this? He's like, well, if he's being willfully ignorant, well, yeah. right? Which is what David French says in this article. We'll talk about it. It's, you know, if you're a white, white high school graduate with yeah. no college, if you're one of them booger-eating morons— yeah. You're probably not going to get the coronavirus vaccine and probably have a Trump flag somewhere in the closet. That's right. It's always, I mean, in our woke culture, you always got to put, you know, the color of your skin in front of all these percentages, right? Like reading the article when you said it to me, where he says only 54% of white evangelicals will definitely quote or probably take the vaccine. And I just stopped and I said, why do you got to put white? What do you mean? Like, and then he goes on to say, you know, the next closest number is, is black Protestants. And then he goes into Catholics. And I'm just like, again, when you have critical race theory as your worldview, as your lens, um, you're already mixing up, you know, the gospel. You're already mixing up um, what what has God said about who we are in Christ and, you know, our anthropology. And we'll, we'll dive into this. But the reason why we're, we're addressing this on this, because this is a worldview issue. Right. This whole talk about vaccines. We're, we're not doing this because we're expert scientists. We're doing this because this is a worldview issue. And, and when someone is going to write an article saying this is a spiritual problem, then it's like, OK, let's talk about it. Why are we why are we let's we, we have to address everything um, according to Scripture. Jason and I believe that Scripture is sufficient to answer every area of life. Um, not in the sense of saying, oh, is the word vaccine the Bible? That's not it. It's it's talking about God has given us principles about what is uh, righteous, what is unrighteous, um, how should we use our minds. And when there's now we, we've been in a year, right, of COVID. Yeah. It's been a year. Yep. Um, happy anniversary to two weeks of yeah. flattening the curve, right? right. So pretty awesome. Um and people are now saying you're go using terms like loving your neighbor, spiritual problem. Is it sin? Is it not? Like you don't have to be a science expert to have discernment and answer these questions because the Bible gives us sufficient answers to talk about. You know how should we think about um, making decisions about health? Um, and that's what we're going to get into today. So right. I'm really excited to look at this from just a biblical worldview standpoint, not about telling you you must or must not, but about what are the categories you need to be thinking about in your metaphysic, your epistemology, and your ethics, because those three principles that we've been talking about apply to this. Yeah, and I think I want to talk a little bit about uh, the immune system. I've mm-hmm. got some helpful graphics. Yes. I've got out some, um, got some col- charts. Uh, crayons. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I, I got a solid C minus in uh, biology. <laughs> you passed. So, yeah. yeah. So, I, I, uh, so I'm going to bring up some help from YouTube. But I want there to talk go. about the immune system. And then even there's world-renowned um, immunologist who worked on Ebola, who's basically one of the experts in the mm-hmm. field, who's telling people not to vaccinate. Right. So he's not even on our team. So I just want to also bring in the fact that there's the reasons to not vaccinate. It's not like we're racist and thumbing our nose at everything that there's reasons not to vaccinate. And perhaps Mm -hmm. just perhaps we should extend some Christian charity to those people that don't want to vaccinate, that disagree with us instead of calling them racist or 
saying, conspiracy theorists. Yes, yeah, saying they're in sin. Yeah. We follow Alex Jones and all right. the conspiracy right. stuff. So, it's yeah, so pushing it too far in that, right? Yeah, it was just it was, alarming to me that to have somebody just basically call out another Christian yeah. as if they're in sin for not getting immunized. immunized. And, and would you make a distinction between, we're talking about, we're probably going to have to make a distinction in categories about just the principle of getting a vaccine in general versus the COVID vaccine and just, you know, obviously how quick it's coming out. Like there's a, we're, we're, there's different categories because it's not like someone who says, I'm not going to get the COVID vaccine. That automatically means you are anti every single solitary vaccine on the planet, right? That's not, some people may say that, but we're going to clarify no. Yeah, I'm not, not yeah, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. So where I would, where I was interested in this is um, because it's an RNA or two of them are, the Moderna and the Mm -hmm. Pfizer are mRNAs, which messenger RNA. So within your cell, in the nucleus is your DNA, Mm -hmm. basically your, the information that of who you are and what your body should do. Mm -hmm. And then out from that nucleus comes RNA which translates into proteins that creates, you know, antibodies that fight mm-hmm. antigens. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, I was interested to know, so are, is this, are we thinking that this vaccine is doing something to your body as if man knows more than God hmm. about how to fight disease? So are we fundamentally altering our DNA Right. So that would be a definite metaphysical concern to say man knows more than God. So we're injecting ourselves with this gene therapy drug to change who we are, because that same guy I got in, 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 a, in conflict with on social media said, wouldn't it be great if we could inject uh, um, a vaccine to remove schizophrenia? And on the surface, you could say, well, yeah, that sounds great. But then, too, it's like, okay, so so did God make a mistake there? Is that your presupposition? Mm-hmm. So is the presupposition that any kind of illness we have, any kind of uh, mental illness, physical illness is a mistake? Or is that sovereignty of God? And did God equip us physically to deal with those? So I was mm-hmm. interested on in in that aspect, metaphysically, do we think men in a lab know mm-hmm. more about God when it comes to our bi- biology and how our bodies work. And yeah. in this instance, I don't necessarily, like I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I think right. if if you can spur your body on to do something, mm-hmm. um, it does anyway, right? We're not yeah. fundamentally re-engineering the person. Yeah. But I would say that this has some unintended consequences that um, we you should be aware of. That fundamentally works differently than, than how your body is designed. So it's kind of man meddling in into the metaphysics that God has created and screwing the whole thing up. And it's fascinating that this, all of those those things that were just brought up is is going back to, okay, well, what is your position on anthropology? What is your position on sin? What is your position on the fall of man, Genesis chapter three? You know, what happened in the garden? What what about our federal head being Adam? Like right. these are questions that if you don't have any grounding biblically, then you know the this is where it can get really messy and paying attention to how should you think through um when it comes to health, when it comes to comes to vaccines, right? Because these are principles that you need to answer. And this this conversation bleeds back to um, I think dominion theology, right. it, it bleeds back to uh, theonomy and God's law about, you know, what is your standard? Are, and, you know, are we, are we just going to spiritualize it and say, well, the vaccine conversation has nothing to do with my Christian life. I go to Christian, you know, I go to a church on Sunday and I worship God and I love God. I read my Bible. But then when it comes to my work, when it comes to, you know, changing diapers or taking medicine, you know, I just trust what the scientists, whatever. It's not a big deal where we want to say as Christians, every area of life is under the Lordship of Christ. So when you have a conversation about um, health or, or even just, you know, there's uh, abortion stuff we've talked about in the name health, you want to have your, your biblical worldview in Christ should be at the center. And what does his word say? Another thing you brought up metaphysics is something that we need to have a have a conviction of as a Christian church is recognizing vaccines that do have um, obviously cells from an abortion, right? Um, 
you know, um, just parts from from a baby and all of that. Like again, like that's where when when someone writes an article that says the spiritual problem at the heart of Christian vaccine refusal, it's like, well, wait a minute. Like you, there's got to be questions that you need to ask. Like, is there, um, you know, cells from an abortion, or is there? What are the ethical questions? You can't just jump in and say, well, you're just, you know, you have a problem with your skin color, which he he talks about, and then or you have a problem with. Um, you know, you're just not well researched just because you're saying no, yeah. right? And then, or if you're saying yes, it's like you you got to go back to these ethical and metaphysical questions, and that's what we want to bring to the table when we talk about biology, which we'll dive into, and then talk about you know what is the apl- application of Christian liberty in making these decisions because Christ is in all and everything is under His lordship. It's not a two kingdom separation right. neutral thing right 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 where we yeah we go to church on sunday but then i don't i don't trust in the sovereignty of god i trust in this guy in a lab coat yeah right M- monday and, through saturday right and just... i mean right and i and i don't want to be like one of those people that you know never go to the doctor right i mean no we're not christian science like that cult where right. it's that's not it at all right, right. but there's it's... a fine line there i mean there's yeah. there's things to consider and i guess that's what we're saying where yeah. That's not what David French is saying in his article. He's mm-hmm. basically being a Pharisee. It's very pharisaical. There's like this secular Talmud out there that whatever the government says you should do, you unconditionally just do it. And we're seeing it now. We've been seeing it for a year, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, and it's, this is it's, just an extension of that. Exactly. I mean, there's there. I was listening to other um, just podcasts and, and YouTube um, videos on how Christians have been talking about this. And one thing that was mentioned, one thing I was listening to, and I think it was in December, you may be more read up on this than me, that there was even a bill passed, right, for all these companies that are giving um, the vaccines that you can't sue them right. in the next four years if anything were to happen to you. So you have till 2024 or if you take it and there's a problem, you can't sue these big companies that are well, right because it's it's been authorized by the government. Right. So you yeah. can't sue the government. No. And the government is the one allowing them to administer these drugs before mm-hmm. the FTA has approved them. So basically, the government has given them the umbrella or a hedge of protection. <laughs> yeah, as we would say. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. So, so the government has basically assumed all the liability, and then, mm-hmm. oh, by the way, you know, you just can't sue big government. Yeah. No. No, because because the way that we have been trained up in our culture today is that, um, and it's it just it's so sad because this goes back to God's law conversation is we have been trained, including Christians, to believe that the government takes care of you. Yeah. The government educates you with their schools. The government takes care of you with your health. Um, we will cover whether it's just general. We, we'll name it insurance, or we'll name it, you know, a vaccine, and we'll got it, we'll get it all covered. Um, taking care of the poor, right? Well, we got that covered. Or foster, like we got that covered. We will take care of everything. Government is, you know, God, right? That and of the system, and we will take care of all your needs. We'll give you the money. And we'll make sure everything's equal, right? Just trust us. That's always been the right. promise um, of Leviathan, right? right? Leviathan coming, and we we submit to Leviathan, and then Leviathan eats us up and kills us um, because we want to be taken care of instead of looking to God's law and say, what has God told us about in our family, um, and what what has He told us that we are responsible for, and what the government and the, He gives laws about what government should do, and then also what what they shouldn't do. Yeah, and what's interesting, we'll, we'll watch this video in a second with this um, this virologist and this doctor. And, and one of the doctors interviewing him says, well, the government has to do something, right? I mean, they can't do nothing mm-hmm. with this pandemic. And he's like, he's like, no, I don't agree with that at all. He's like, what's the Hippocratic Oath? First, do no harm, right? Wow. So if you're going to do harm, you're better doing nothing than doing harm. Wow. Right? This is not, this guy's not a Christian. No, wow. he's not on our team at yeah. all. And then, and this guy is the guy who knows about viruses. Cause he's saying in the midst of a, of a attack, mm-hmm. you don't give a prophylactic vaccine to people in the midst of a pandemic because it's so rapidly changing that you're taking away the body's normal function to fight these, um, these, uh, antigens because you're giving them a virus that looks for a specific antigen and as it mutates your body not only will will your body your body will actually ignore the new mutation 
and the antibodies that you've gotten from the vaccine will override your nonspecific antibodies in your in, uh, that you have that will target just anything, right? You have these these NK cells that roam around looking mm-hmm. for bad antigens that tell these other cells to come uh, come and create antibodies to fight it and kill it. And he's saying, if you if you're doing that in the heat of a pandemic, you're actually doing more harm to the population than you're doing good. So we have a scientist who has, you know, has these qualifications, right? He's, he's worked on Ebola. You know, this is something I think um, he shared. He came out on LinkedIn, I believe. Right. Yeah. And, and talking yeah. about this. So when we hear this right as Christians, we should be called again to love the Lord our God with all our minds and we have the media telling us, you know, it's, you know, it's completely safe or whatever. And then you have this. And my point is, OK, let's use our minds and say, OK, let's take a step back. Let's calm down and let's let's study and let's do our digging. and Let's have discernment and not just jump to, well, you're a conspiracy theorist if you decide not to do it. Right. Um, and it's like when we hear this, it's like why it's like this painting that what the, what happens is there's this rhetoric that will come out and say, well, this person's crazy or, you know, you're, you're called all these names because it's going against the agenda and the worldview of what they want to push. Remember, we've said this from episode one. There's no neutrality. Right. right? Everyone has a presupposition. Even this guy, they all have presuppositions. So you can't just go into this, you know, like, well, if the majority is saying, let's just do it and, and just um, we'll just got to go with it. Well, if you if you decide to take it, make sure as a, you know, as a Christian that you are loving God with all your mind and you have you've done the study and you have a conviction. It's a Christian liberty issue and not just cave in to whatever you're hearing. When we hear this, we should listen and go into what scripture says. And again, not make it a well, you're more righteous or you're or you're not a sin issue, which this article from French does. And I just I think the reason what I'm my point is what you just shared is something that we should take seriously. Right. right? Um, and not just look past it um, if it's not being covered by the news or whatever it may be. We just need to love our minds in this conversation and think about ethics and metaphysics. Yeah, and I think we need to think critically. So, so, so yeah. often. So, you look at that French article, and we were talking before the show. What's what's the point of that article, right? It's coercion. It's like many of the things that fly Guilt at tripping. us. Yeah, it's coercion. So everybody has some insecurity, right? right. We want to be liked. We have just yeah. as as people, we have insecurity. So if you let that drive the car, mm-hmm. then you're going to have fear of man issues, which is what they play on, right? You're yeah. stupid if you don't wear a mask. All, all the scientists say that uh, getting the vac- vaccine is good, so you should get the vaccine. If you don't get the vaccine, you obviously are in sin and have a sin issue or a spiritual problem. Yeah. If you vote for Trump, then you're a bigot, right? So they're constantly attacking you mm-hmm. with the tyranny of the expert, mm-hmm. the 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 coercive nature of you're not fitting in, you're not one of us, there's something defective yeah. with you. And if we aren't careful and critically thinking, we could fall for that quickly. Right. If you're it's not like, in check with your emotions. Because you just want to ask the basic presuppositional question. Well, like when, when this article says, you know, you're not loving your neighbor, it's it sounds simple. But again, we, it's powerful. Well, you just ask, well, who says? Right. By what standard? By what standard? Like, right. tell me who says. And then if you say, well, God, OK, perfect. Let's open our Bibles. Right. Let's have a Bible study and let's show me scripture where you are saying that it is righteous. It's part of the law of God that you must do this. When we when there's words like you must or, you know, it's it's not loving or all these dogmatic things, that's where scripture needs to come out and be the standard. Right. right? And it's a simple question, but that's and then or, you know, we do this with um in apologetics, right? When we talk to like a Mormon, right? And their their standard is Joseph Smith. And then you have a JW or, a, or let's do a Muslim whose standard is, is uh, Muhammad, their prophet. Okay, well, they both say that they're the final authority, but they're both wrong or, they're, or one of them's right, one of them's wrong. Who decides, right. right? So when we go to the experts, one expert says, you know, here's my concerns. Think about this. It's dangerous or whatever. And then another expert says it's totally fine. But then everyone's saying, well, listen to that. It's like, well, who says? By what standard? Let's let's take a step back and have discernment 
and study, look at these things. Again, it's not about being a PhD in biology, but it's just asking those presuppositional questions and not jump right into you're, you have a spiritual problem. Well, right? and then how do they, how do they transcend, transcendentally fix that, right? When you yeah. have two people disagreeing, they cancel one. Yeah. Right. And that's supposed yeah. to settle it. Yeah. So but but here we I mean, it's it's just such a complex issue. It's not as it simple. Is complex. Even yeah. if scientists all agreed, if yeah. I couldn't go online and in a two minute Google, mm -hmm. find people with a bunch of letters after their name yeah. that said we shouldn't be vaccinating yeah. or you should or if you're healthy, you shouldn't be getting mm -hmm. it. If you're under 50, your your risk of dying or going mm -hmm. to the hospital is so low that you should actually let your body create the antibodies that it needs to get yeah. to herd immunity. I mean, even if I couldn't find a bazillion guys that said that, that counter um, like the French side of the argument yeah. saying, just get it or you're a booger eating moron, right? right? There's all kinds of ethical issues like the Johnson & Johnson vaccine mm -hmm. that the Catholic Church came out before it said you could get it, came out and said, don't get it because oh. they use aborted fetal tissue. Wow. And this isn't a secret. You can just yeah. Google it. And um, Well, it's hard to find now with the media controlling what you read and what yeah. you look up. Maybe. Well, I found it in the North Dakota, um, <laughs> North Dakota um, public health website. There you go. Actually issued a whole statement about it and said what, what's in it and how it was made. Hmm. Right. And but then they go back and they go, well, but don't worry. It was a, a what do they call it? A, a consensual abortion. Yeah. I, the, I'm sure the baby didn't consent yeah. to being aborted. Right. right. It's a consensual abortion that was done in the 60s. So it's it, it was a baby that was killed 50 years ago. So it's OK. Right. So 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 but they didn't hide the fact that it is a aborted fetal tissue that was used to create uh, this vaccine and used for testing and all the so it was used in the making of the vaccine. So even if the scientists did agree, you still have ethical issues. And then also, uh, how do you how many people are not taking this because they don't trust the government? Well, if if a Christian were to read that, right, you know, right from the North Dakota, you know, website, they read that and they're like, oh, well, in my conviction, if that's what I read, that's the information I got. I'm not going to take it. Let's just, that's just the conviction in this scenario. Well, then the spiritual thing comes up. It's like, why would, why would anyone call that person, you know, you're willfully ignorant, right? right? Now, maybe let's say um, they, I'm just giving, this is just an example. Like, well, you read the wrong article or you just, you, this is not true. It's like, okay, fine. Well then show me something so I can learn more. Don't, don't put, put me in this you're in sin or you're you have a spiritual problem or as French says, well, you're in the you're in the category of being white. So that's your problem, too. You're jumping. It's like you're just jumping all these all these horrible conclusions that are not biblical when, you know, someone's just a Christian's being innocent. They find that article and they read it. It's not them being willfully willfully ignorant. They're they're talking about they're thinking in their minds ethically with the conviction if this is OK or not. Okay. Now, many Christians have. Um, taken the vaccine. I see it all over social media, right? And there's, you know, and that's going to be up to obviously your own conviction about what you've studied and you wanting to take it, whatever your risk is. But one thing that's just what's fascinating is in this, because we could talk about, right, the flu shot or Ebola, right. or there's so many different things, you know, that's happened recently or swine flu in the past, right? But there's a movement or, or a thing now where, where people are, and I'm talking not just whether college students or young adults, but I'm saying evangelical leaders too, um, are posting on social media that they got it. Like they, they just, it's just this thing. It's like, that's part of the, what you do now when you go right. get this vaccine. I mean, you know, we, we, we can vaccine our kids, right? When they're infants or if there's another health issue, but when it comes to COVID, there seems to be this pattern of sharing with the world that you got it. Right. And I'm, I'm looking at this like, okay, we've seen a lot of virtue signaling this past year with the BLM riots and trying to jump on the social justice train and blackout Tuesday and, you know, trying to show how much, you know, you care about, like, if you just post this, you're, you're showing the world that you care. And now we're bleeding this into this health thing where you got to show that why, I mean, I'm still wondering why is this necessary for people to do that? 
Yeah, and it seems to be a synchronization because there's there's a lot of corollaries between the people that aren't going to church or mm-hmm. haven't opened their church, yeah. are woke, mm-hmm. and are, are virtue signaling the vaccine, right? Yeah, I mean— And, and, and anti-Trumpers, right? I, I'm not thrilled. I wasn't thrilled with him either, but, I mean, yeah, I faced mean, with right? Biden-Harris, I voted for him twice, <laughs> right? So— um, just because they hate me and my lifestyle, everything about me. They hate everything about Christians, yeah. right? So that's where I can't understand a Christian voting for them, mm-hmm. right? Well, the I, abortion issue is like a slam dunk. Yeah, I mean, how like, do you get past just, that? It's just that alone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So once you but get past that, then yeah. it's the LGBT thing. Not, yeah, it's just, and Trump obviously was a big failure on that too. But, right, um, he was. But at sure. least, he, you know, he wanted, uh, you know, uh, religious liberty. Mm-hmm. So... Um, so I guess we've we I, we'll link um, I guess the French article. We don't have to talk too much about it because it's trash. I mean, it's just I mean it is really intellectual garbage because there's no solid arguments here. It's just sad that you have to now you're making people when you read it think that we got to now separate once again for the millionth time in our woke culture that we got to separate black and white. And we got it. It's just, and then you, and then you paint the white in the victim or like, or not, sorry, it's the other way around. Um, You know, it's, it's, they're the problem. Right. Um, And it's just right there. You're already, it's already, you've already taken, it's like, I couldn't even, I mean, I finished the article, but like, I had to stop there and be like, you lost me. Right. You lost me when, because you've already shown from the very beginning, you don't have a biblical anthropology when you're using stats and you're separating black and white, completely irrelevant, um, when it comes to the biblical category, like we talked about last week um, with, with cultish, there's only one race, the human right. race. And now you're, you're painting a spiritual problem, loving, you got to love your neighbor and doing this. It's just, it's really hurting the body of Christ. In, and actually, the, the, the goal is to try to probably bring unity. It's actually bringing disunity when you do that. Yeah, and just the argumentation. So a spiritual problem, I would say that's called sin, Right. If I said you had a spiritual problem, we're talking about sin. Yes. So he's basically saying you're in sin if you don't get the Mm -hmm. vaccine. And his argumentation is demographics. Yeah. The demographics of people that don't get that aren't getting the vaccine. There's no biblical biblical arguments in there. It's all demographics and attacking the sin of being white or being Mm -hmm. a white male that's only been to high school, right? So, so to me that that are the argument. There was no arguments in there from a Christian worldview. Like you said, there's no biblical anthropology. There's no no real sound argumentation. Because um, you and, have to give me law. Give me God's right, word right. that I am, like, because 1 John 3, 4 says sin is, you know, transgressing the law. Right. That's what sin is. So, so show me in God's law that that not doing this is a transgression. Right. It's, it's against God's holy character. Right. Right. Exactly. A spiritual problem. We yeah. can't even use the word sin. When we're going to call people out, yeah, and then an, yeah. then some pastor sends this garbage to me, mm-hmm. and, and you know, or po- posts it on a on a group that a bunch of us from seminary belong to, as if this is convincing, uh, a convincing hermeneutic, right? Yeah. So so anyway, we will post this on our Gab uh, bl- um, group, mm-hmm. uh, worldgab.com backslash worldviews at war. I'm also going to post this. I already post this video that we're going to play. In, in, in its entirety mm-hmm. of this doctor interviewing this virologist of, about that. So, but, so let's get into that. So, so we already have this article saying you're in sin if you don't get the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Well, let's show the first maybe logical reason why you, you sh- you, a person wouldn't get the vaccine and not be in sin because there's good medical or, or metaphysical reasons not to get it. Yeah, right. so it's it's the idea of you have studied because this person's gonna this article saying you're ignorant. You've studied, you've learned something about a doctor, and you have a conviction of like, okay, hold on, I'm not gonna get it, or maybe I'll wait four years, right? Yeah. Let's wait because that's the you know the coverage of the companies. Let me wait four years and see what happens, you know, and see. Okay, is this a spiritual problem to not love your neighbor, love your neighbor because of what they what someone found here from this from this video? Right, right. Okay, so first, the first video I'm gonna I'm gonna play. It's four minutes, and it's a really good condensed um, primer on how vaccines work mm-hmm. and how it works with our body, which is gonna be important when we listen to um, the doctor uh, talk about 
the, what's uh, who, Dr. Gert uh, Vanden Bosch when he talks about the problems with creating a vaccine in the heat of a pandemic. Hmm. First, you must understand how the immune system works. When a virus enters your body, it will attach itself to one of your cells and inject its DNA or RNA into it. This is like a blueprint for your cells, containing instructions on what the cell has to make. So in this case, the virus's RNA will tell your cell to make more copies of the same virus. They become factories, assembling new copies of the virus that can infect even more cells. But don't worry, our bodies have a defense system for foreign intruders. The immune system attacks any protein, virus or bacteria that does not belong in our bodies. But it takes a few days for it to learn how to attack the intruder. Meanwhile, the virus factories are running non-stop, quickly replicating the virus and spreading it in your body. In other words, you start experiencing symptoms of whatever has infected you. After a few days, however, your immune system will have figured out how to attack the virus and will start producing antibodies. These attach themselves to the virus, preventing them from infecting more cells and marking them for destruction. As you can see, the immune system is remarkable, but it's slow to mount an attack. That is the reason why we can get sick in the first place. So to give it a helping hand, we developed vaccines. The main idea is to train your immune system to recognize and fight off an infection before it has occurred. Almost like showing your immune system a mugshot of the virus and saying, if you see this, kill it. There are various types of vaccines, but let's take a look at the new... So this is important because this mRNA, the Pfizer Moderna, is giving your body this wanted poster of a virus, and this is pre-mutation. And then this virus has already mutated to the point where this doctor that we're going to show, this Gert Van den Bosch, has said the, vi the, the um, vaccine is basically useless now because of all the mutations. So Got it. we're way okay. behind the curve. I, right. This is why you don't vaccine in the midst of a pandemic. This is why I'm a visual learner. This is yeah. like <laughs> in science. It's good, right? Yeah. yeah. Just, it makes it so clear. Kit on the block, mRNA vaccines. To understand how they work, let's take the COVID-19 pandemic as an example. You might have seen pictures of the virus with its distinctive spikes. These spikes allow the virus to attach to specific cells in your body and infect them. Now, here's the key idea for the COVID-19 vaccine. What if we could train our immune system to recognize these spikes by having our own bodies produce them? To do that, researchers took the virus's blueprint, its RNA, and isolated the part responsible for producing the spikes. Armed with this blueprint, they created mRNA, or messenger RNA. This is a special form of RNA that can enter your cells and give them instructions. In this case, the RNA contains instructions to build the spikes of the coronavirus. Not the virus itself, just the spikes. So mRNA vaccines contain instructions for your cells that tell them to build a part of a virus in large volumes, almost like giving them a recipe to follow. Once this is happening, your immune system kicks into action and starts learning how to attack these intruders. This is why people get sick after they get the shots. Makes sense. Got it. In another part of that that um, video, Gert Van den Bosch also talks about g giving somebody one shot in the in the middle of a pandemic can create the worst case scenario where they're sick and now they get a mutated virus that they can't fight in the midst of fighting the other virus and that's what kills people. Oh, because they're in the they're in the process of fighting this when they're sick, and then something else and a mutated, a mutated form gets them, and it's the Got worst it. case scenario. Got it. I see. Again, it's because again, this is what the RNA that's been given to your body is a, a coronavirus that may or may not even be in the wild anymore. It could have mutated mm. by now, and so now it counts on your your cells to be looking for that virus. So where where I guess this this video is a bit misleading is if as soon as the first, um, from my understanding, I'll say again, I'm not a biologist, but I've done a lot of reading on this. It's, so when, you're, when that first cell gets, gets attacked by an antigen, like a coronavirus, um, that cell starts to, to communicate that there's a foreign body in there. And so and it starts to uh, trigger your immune system. So, it, so it's not as if, you know, that goes unheated by your by your body. So it's like 
maybe you can help me here. So this video gave like the help, the um, wanted poster, right? Yeah. Wanted, here it is. So that's like saying your body sees the wanted poster and then um, of COVID, right? And then yeah. COVID comes in, but he's dressed up in something different. Like he has like a disguise on, a costume. Right. And then your body misses him because, you know, they're looking at the picture Right. This is who we're who we gotta get after, but then it's disguised, so it misses. Is that would that be a so so uh, so or? Dr. Bosch will say it's not even it's worse than oh, that. Oh, it's worse. Okay. So because what happens is now you have antibodies mm -hmm. in that are are coming out in the form, you know, so the RNA creates antibodies that are looking for that specific virus. Now a virus in disguise shows up. And not only will those antibodies ignore that virus because it's not the one that was on the wanted poster, but you have actual antibodies that are nonspecific in your body that just roam around and kill things, right? Oh, that are okay. nonspecific. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be a coronavirus. But because mm -hmm. you've gotten this vaccine, you, you're, the antibodies that you have from the wanted poster will actually block your non-specific antibodies from interrupting the new one dressed up in a raincoat or a disguise. So Got it's it. actually worse Got it. to okay. have this. So, so let's just armed with that basic information. Let's, let's listen to the doctor talk about, um, getting, getting this vaccine in the, in the heat of a pandemic and how that can be bad. This is this is Dr. Gert Vanden Bosch, who again is a an internationally recognized expert in vaccine creation. I was just explaining we don't understand our weapon because we don't understand that prophylactic vaccines should not be used in the midst of an epidemic, and we don't understand exactly what the virus is doing. So we go to a war and we don't know our enemy, we don't understand the strategy of our enemy, and we don't know how our weapon works. I mean, how is how is that going to go? Uh, so, the yeah, weapon is being vaccine. problem to begin with. I, I, I understand, and I, I completely accept that. But at the same time, I am still thinking that if the governments don't respond in some way, because they have to be seen to be doing something, um, what they seem to be in a lose-lose situation. If they don't do anything, they're going to be criticized. And if they do do something, they're going to be criticized. Is that a fair statement to make? I don't think so. What was this out of, uh, what's the name of the guy, Hippocrates? Mm -hmm. You know first, the old? The first do no harm. Okay. Well, I mean... It wouldn't matter if you if you start uh, vaccinating people and even it doesn't work. Problem is that we induce a long lived antibody response. And as a matter of fact, we know, I mean, that is not my knowledge. It's all published. Problem is that we we fail to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Fact is that these long lived antibodies, which have high specificity, of course, for the for the for the virus, they outcompete our natural antibodies. Because they're natural antibodies, they have a very broad spectrum, but they have low affinity, right? And so by doing this, even if your antibodies don't work anymore because there is resistance or, you know, the, the strains are uh, too different from the original strain, we still, these antibodies, specific antibodies, will still continue to outcompete your natural antibodies. And that is a huge problem because I was saying just a few minutes ago, these natural antibodies, they provide you with broad protection. This protection is, yes, it is variant non-specific. Add. Yeah, I lost it. But yes. um, so, so what he's saying is exactly what we were talking about, right? So you have, you have non-specific antibodies that live in your immunity, right? God created us mm -hmm. with a defense mechanism to live in this world, to create antibodies to fight viruses. So what he's saying is by kind of short circuiting the system and trying to get RNAs in there, even though the intention was good, we've kind of screwed it up because he's saying we're going to war with a weapon we don't under with, with a weapon we don't understand and an enemy we don't understand. So my point with that is is well first of all everybody needs to go watch that video. So go to gab.com worldviews at war 
watch that video because this guy's an expert, a scientific expert. Share this with as many people as you can because I he believes we should stop vaccinating. It sounds like this is more complex than just oh it's just a, you're you're this is a spiritual problem you have. It's right. like right. When you have articles like this, this French article just making these dogmatic state again, this is why um, these categories just don't work biblically for for him to say you have a problem when you just you have Christians that you have to discern these things ethically from a biblical worldview. And it's just, you know, now you have this coming out and then you have, you know, a movement of disunity saying you're in sin um, if, right. you, if you make the decision to not. Right. And what's it. the sin? Loving your neighbor. So so am I loving my neighbor if I'm becoming a, a, an incubator for a mutated virus that can kill somebody? That's vulnerable. Well, it's the same thing with wearing a mask, loving your neighbor, right? I right. I mean, when, when you have, um, you know, and Cross Politic did a good segment on this a couple months ago, just about, they did a whole chart about just, you know, what, um, the reality of what happens when you wear a mask, um, whether right. it's a cloth versus all these things, and showing, you know, the bacteria that can, you know, that if you wear it for a long time, that could be um, not helpful. Yeah. But again, it's loving your neighbor. Well, what it, we've talked about this, so I won't go deep into it, but it's like by, but remember, love rejoices with the truth. First right. Corinthians 13. So right. what is the truth about wearing a mask? What is the truth about how you should look at, you know, the certain medicine you take or the way you look at, um, you know, refusing to take something or taking it there. Love rejoices with the truth. So if you're going to love your neighbor, right, the standard of love isn't your feelings or it isn't, you know, to please the world. You want to do it in what the truth, what reality, what metaphysics, right? What is reality, right? right? Um, so sorry, I didn't want to. No, right, but you're I just right. bringing no. that all back with the mask thing and all these other yep. things about what love actually is. Well, and then, so and here's the other thing. So say you believe, say say take that issue off the table and say, okay, so the virus does work. The vi- the vaccine. So, oh, sorry, the vaccine. Yeah. So say the vaccine does work. Yeah. So h- how old is David French? I have no idea. Right? How old are some of these dudes that are getting the the vaccine? Yeah. So who's the most vulnerable? in our population that you could argue need the vaccine? Well, it would be from what we've been learning for the past year, be the the elderly, right? right? The elderly. Right. um, So why would you, if you're going to say you love your neighbor and call me sinful for not getting it, how do you explain the fact that you stepped in line ahead uh, of the elderly? Well, Babylon B hit that on the nail. Did you? I think I, I, yeah, (laughs) I don't think I saw that. Okay. Babylon B had an article saying, I'm going to, paraphrase you could just google it that basically the article satire by the way for those who don't know said that um uh evangelicals graciously let people go first to take to get the vaccine you know out of love right they, they jokingly saying no i'll let you take it yeah, first right yeah, exactly. we'll go for it you know poking at you know these people the i don't want to take the vaccine yeah, yeah so the we'll rat. be loving and we'll let you right. take it first and again babylon b hits that on the nail because it's it's the satire of of saying exactly right right of, of saying okay everyone needs to get vaccinated you you know the government's pushing you know you know you know what was it that joe biden said that we're going to have every american vaccinated by july or something right, right that he said recently but the point babylon b was making is that joke of of people who don't want it just letting you know others go because yeah i mean the logical go yeah well if you're 20 18 15 you know, shouldn't the logic be let the 80 year olds or the 70 year olds get it? I yeah. mean, I don't, again, it's just these are bigger questions that you, again, have to ask as a Christian and not already make it a spiritual issue. I mean, we've seen this with wearing a mask is a spiritual issue. Uh, critical race theory is a gospel issue. You know, racism is a gospel issue. It's it's just putting the Bible verses and putting these sprinkling spiritual things on every issue to, you know, just to please the world and, and say, you just need to do this, right? Right, right. Um, You know, there's rhetoric of calling this a plague. Okay. I mean, what, how do we, what about the, the language we use to call this, right? Or, or you know, quoting Richard, Richard Baxter, you know, where Richard Baxter talks about closing church or because of a plague. Well, what plague was he dealing with? The Black Death. 
right? Yeah. So yeah, it's just we we have to pay attention and we have to choose our words carefully. Right. Um, and that's why rhetoric is so important on, on what you're how you're calling this and what labels that you're giving people because every word has definitions and and our culture is changing definitions. Um, and one other thing I'll add to this that's on a side note, but one thing I I loved. From this is when the guy interviewing that doctor said, "Well, it's a lose lose. Shouldn't the government do something? Right. right? They have to do something." And he's like, "No, no, like, no, they don't." And and I was thinking, well, that's that's a little hint of of understanding, you know, sphere sovereignty. Right. That Christians don't commonly aren't aren't taught by the local church, evangelical church, the sphere sovereignty where God has established the role of what the church is supposed to do, what the family is supposed to do, and what the government, civil magistrates, it's all government, but civil magistrates is called to do. And that's a deeper question in this conversation that no one is talking about is, well, what is God's role to the civil magistrates that they are called to do? Right. It's, it's, right. it's, it's back to that Romans 13 issue. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, which again was on my list of another good reason for maybe Christians don't get a vaccine. So what if you've lived through a year where you've gotten nothing but double speak from your government and all they've done is lied to you and now they're telling you, oh, take this vaccine that, by the way, is experimental, but don't worry, wink, wink, it's going to be fine. So I'll tell you, in the military right now, yeah. it's a big problem for the military leaders. Like, they don't know what to do. The really? generals don't know what to do because more than half of people in the military— are, won't get the virus uh, um, voluntarily. The vaccine. Yeah, oh, man, yeah. I keep saying that. <laughs> so they don't want the vaccine voluntarily. Right. Um, I'll tell you, even in, in the state where I serve, 68% in my unit have not volunteered to get it. And so, so it causes, so they talk about incentives, but it looks a lot like coercion, right? So how do you get people to take it? So, so I would just ask why. It's just the basic question of saying, okay, you give me 68%. Well, as a Christian, you know, who wants to be spiritual, whatever, or just wants to follow God faithfully, I just, the basic question is like, well, I want to know why, because the government's been lying to us and, you know, they've been hurting businesses and all these different things have been going on for the past year. So I just, it just sounds like common sense. I just want to ask why before I just make a decision Right. Well, of, of doing right. it. Well, and so it, I'm not, it, am I living in sin by just asking right. a basic question as to why they're not doing that? Well, I think you know, and it, it's again, do you trust your leaders? Do you trust mm. the people put put in charge? So we'll we'll hear things like, well, you know, the sooner everybody gets this vaccine, the sooner we can stop social distancing and wear masks. Well, but Doctor Fauci, sorry, you go first. No, you yeah, but know. I mean, but that's that's <laughs> fallacious. So yeah. getting this vaccine, right? Yeah, Dr. Fauci even said you have to wear a mask. You still have to. You but, still have to social distance. But right, all this does is make it easier on you if you actually contract it, if you believe that that's how it's going to work with all the mutations, right? After we heard from, from Dr. Bosch. So, so we're getting the messaging that get this vaccine so that it can do what it's not designed to do. So when people are saying that to you, you're like, okay, so you you don't even get what this is what this is supposed to do. And then, how long has it been dispelled the myth of asymptomatic spread? And what about just the concern? This goes back to the whole trusting the government about when Dr. Fauci and even President Biden have said, well, look, you'll get it, you'll get it, and then, but you still got a social distance, you still right. have to wear a mask. July Fourth might be the time, maybe if you comply with us. But it's like, wasn't that the whole, wasn't that the whole point of right. this vaccine so we can get life back to quote unquote normal? Right. But now you're saying, no, 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 just remember when you get it, you still have to wear two. Right. Wear two masks and then, you know, and follow us. So like where, again, it's just asking where's the standard? Where's the line? You know, when are we going to start just realizing, okay, is this a concern for us as Christians that are living in this, you know, um, in this culture of government overreaching into telling us, like, you know, it's um, there, it's it's going back to the idea of, like, you know, I think it was Charlie Kirk that mentioned, you know, we, it's the role of the president is he works for us right. as citizens, right? He's served, but consent but the way, to the people, consent to the people. But that speech he gave a couple weeks ago, right, is it's like he's acting like, no, you follow me, right. I'm gonna tell you what to do, I'm gonna tell you ironically what you can do on Independence Day, right? So right. 
that these are deeper questions that we need to open our Bibles and see, okay, what is going on in the biology aspect of it? And then the, the reality of all these other layers about, uh, you know, Dr. Fauci and other people saying, well, you still got to do X, Y, and Z, even when you get this vaccine that has had the rhetoric on social media saying this is going to save the world. I mean, right. I've seen not Christians, but I've seen unbelievers, again, got to take that into factor because they don't have a biblical worldview, that they, they are just so excited. This is changing lives. I'm saving lives by doing this when all Christians should affirm the sovereignty of God and that we trust in Christ alone, not a man-made vaccine or not, you know, anything else. But Jesus um, is our anchor, you know, in any right. area of life. And we should be thinking that way and not think like the world thinks, well, this is our, our savior. Right. Well, right. And extending charity, because I see this issue with the vaccinations yeah. a lot like opening or not opening your churches or going to church. So Romans 13, we agree God institutes governments and, and people yes. in charge, but it's not unconditional. See Acts 5, right? Yeah. See Acts chapter 5. So the government's you know, power isn't unconditional. So people are going to say, I trust, I don't trust the government. People are going to say, I trust the government. They, they, you know, they're, they've got my best interest at heart and we've got to leave room for each other to, to be able to discern that for ourselves and maybe say, I'm going to just take a knee on this one and Mm -hmm. wait it out and see, because I'm 30 and the likelihood of dying from this is so low that I don't really need to get it. So that's where, again, the principle of Christian liberty and the principle of saying, like you said, like just, you know, take a deep breath when someone is saying they're not going to get it or maybe they are going to get it. It's just like, okay, there's Christian liberty and recognize it's not a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual issue when, I mean, you're the ironic thing is you're going to, you are going to, you're the problem when you start saying it's sin or not right. sin, right? Or, or even the whole virtue signaling thing, right? Where Jesus it makes it so clear in the principles of prayer, fasting, right? Don't show the world that you're doing this, right? It, I mean, I don't know if this is a stretch or not, but it's like people in one sense are getting their reward right. when they're putting on social media that, look, I got it, you know, got to stop this plague, right? It's over, <laughs> right? And it's like, why, why do you need to do that? What, what you know we we take we we have you know we we vaccinate our children or we get vax other vaccines right which is fine or um you know you take medicine when you're sick i mean do you post that like yeah why do you need to show the world hey everybody take some nyquil (laughs) it's like again there you're not you're the righteousness um you know you're not more righteous or less righteous by posting it it's like so why do you need to show the world um right it's just that's another question i just you know, I'm, I'm curious if we could just think more about that. Yeah. And, you know, because, again, we would never do that. Hopefully we would never do that with our prayers or with our fasting or with anything yeah. else. But I, I just with ha- this vaccine and what the world wants us to believe, it's like that's what we're doing. I just have this vision of David French praying in the temple saying, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like <sighs> the – white males that haven't been to college and too stupid to get the vaccine. It's like, but it's, that's what it's, it's sad. Like, it's like, wow, like that's what you're, you know, what it's coming down to. Don't, we should never look down onto someone else, you know, like that. If you got the vaccine and you run into another Christian saying, I'm not going to get it. I mean, checking our hearts to not say, God, I thank you. I'm not like that guy. Right. Or, or I'll say vice versa too. Right. You know, even if you're not going to get it and someone, you know, a Christian in your church says, yeah, I got it. You know, check your hearts. Right. Don't say, God, I thank you that I'm not like that guy. Right. It's like Christian liberty and not virtue signaling. And again, doing your homework and having a biblical worldview and how you make these decisions. Yeah. I, the self, I think that's a great point. Not being mm-hmm. self-righteous on either side, either side. Cause I, yeah. I can so easily fall into that. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you must be secular. Yeah. In your, <laughs> in like, your thinking. Yeah. Silly, silly, immature yeah. Christian. It's yeah. like, so I have been, I've been in relationships with, with guys where we each thought the other one was the weaker brother. We oh, just, but we were yeah. just not going to say anything. We're not going to say anything, right. <laughs> right, yeah. but but you've got to be able to have that relationship and yeah. be like, well, I love this guy anyway, yeah. and we're going to be friends, and we're going to be in fellowship. Mm-hmm. We just don't agree on this issue. Yeah. There's And there's got to be room for that without calling each other out as if we're in sin. Right, exactly. You know? It's like we both, because both are going to have the conviction that they love God's word, right? So, again, have that conversation with your brother and sister in Christ 
and leave room for that discussion in, you know, it's like no need to have, do ad hominem, you right. know, logical fallacies, but recognize what we played today is these are things coming out. So again, yeah. it's not, this isn't a, you don't have a spiritual problem if you're going to make the decision to not do it. It's again, we got to take a step back and let's try to show more, more unity. Um, right. And, and, ta- and, you know, we could have these conversations, right. Um, as things are coming out, but again, it's just, it's very sad. I just actually, I even look at the subtitle of this article. I completely missed it. I'm, my eyes just caught it right now. Why so many white evangelicals reluctant to consider the health of their community. Again, that subtitle right. is so divisive and, in the well, body and of Christ and racist. That, I know that's the funny thing. Critical race theory tries to it's solve racism. By this being is being racist. racist. It is right. It's calling out, yeah. gen, you know, people generically by their, by their skin pigment. Yeah. Right, because like, we're all the same race. We're human race. Right. So, which I, I love to put that on forms, like race. I put human. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, <laughs> whenever I have to fill out a form go, and they right. leave me space, I yeah. put human. Yeah. Human. They, no one ever, no one ever questions yeah. it. They're just like, ah, oh, white guy, white, white, guy. Guy. white <laughs> evangelical. We'll write yeah, him off. They write him off. He's, he's yeah. probably uneducated. There you go. So how about this? All right. So here's an argument. Yeah. So. Um, Todd Freehold used this okay. from Wretched. Yeah. And I think he's right on. He So if we go to 1 Corinthians 6, right? Mm-hmm. So it says, all things are lawful for me, but not... So we're starting at 12, and we'll just go through 16 here. So okay. all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for the food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immortality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do not take, do do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one becomes one body with her. So obviously the context here is sexual immorality. Yes, but Paul's we, dealing with but, the church. But Todd yeah. Friel extended this to say, this also, we use this uh, scripture all the time to talk about what we put in our body, what we drink, what okay. we eat. Right. Um, yeah. You know, do we defile the body? Yeah. You know, can, mm-hmm. can you know, because we're the, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. Should we smoke weed? Yeah. Right. All those arguments. So, right. Could this argument also be used for, as for as a Christian thinking, should I put something foreign in my body, and, um, and can I have a conscience clause here, and and say I I don't want to put anything foreign in my body because my body is equipped to deal with this, yeah. right? And I trust God will make the uh, mRNA to fight an antigen that finds its way in its my body. I don't have to have this put in it. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think this is where I am. I mean, I'll put it out there. I, I think that's where I am right now. I I don't trust. I think this thing was so rushed that I don't trust mm-hmm. it. And then when I hear stuff like this with legitimate doctors saying, um, this actually short circuits the way your body works. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm better off, you know, letting my body do what it's supposed to do, living a healthy lifestyle, mm-hmm. and then trusting in the sovereignty of God. Yeah, I think for me, the application, I think, can apply for sure. I mean, you gave the context, right? This is yeah. about sexual morality. But again, it's regarding, you know, we sh- how we should we should care about how we treat our bodies, period, right? It's it's That is a biblical principle. Um, one thing I think we just got to clarify in case anyone, you know, misinterprets, you know, this conversation, the idea of like they're just so anti- vaccines in general or maybe even say like well they may ask the question so are you against medicine in general and it's like well no we're not christian scientists or that it's not that's a cult by the way for those who don't know it's not neither christian or science but that cult uh believes that you that there's a movement in that cult about not taking anything any medical thing and then unfortunately there's scary stories of you know people dying because they just won't take any medicine Um, go check out cultish. They have a bunch of episodes on that. That's not what Christians believe. Christians are obviously for, you know, surgery or medicine or, you know, all those things. Right. But maybe that would be the pushback. Well, that could be a foreign medicine. So the way I would look at it is like, okay, right. It's, it's going back to glorifying your, your, your God in your body. And, you know, when it comes to this question, it is, this is my application is you are without excuse 
to just go, just be willy nilly and just do what, what the world is telling you to do that you as a Christian are called to, you know, do your homework and love God with your mind and should care about what you put in your body. Right. Right. So, and that's why this conversation matters from a worldview perspective is because it, it, this is a witness is an issue that you need to think about your epistemology and your ethics and your metaphysics about what is going on and what these doctors are saying. You can't just let it slide. Right. So we should, and I think all of us, we would, we would agree, right. That, um, you would want to have discernment about, you know, when you take Advil or so you want to, you know, know, okay, what is this? Is this going to affect me? in a horrible way or when you drink alcohol it's like you have discernment god says don't get drunk so here's a spoiler don't get drunk right, right it's right. like we care about our body so so yeah there is application to glorify god in your body and do not just believe in what the world is telling you but make your decisions and you again everyone has their own conscience right you need to be fully convinced in your own mind and you need to know, right? It's the same with like, you know, when you discern literature, when you watch, you know, movies, it's like, you know, God gave us a mind to discern these things. So use it. Don't just, you know, soak in pleasure, but use it to discern this is, you know, anti-gospel or, or what this point is saying and, and use your mind to discern these things. I don't know. Do you think that, that helps? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're right. I think, um, yeah, I mean, all these things come in, and we should yeah. be thinking about them. And I think you're right. Like, I'm not, I'm not an anti-vaxer. Right. You know, I've got you know how many shots that I've got. <laughs> yeah, in, you're in, in the, the military, military, right? So I know, right? I got thirty shots in one day. I think once. What? So, well, when you go to boot camp, they have these guns, and so Whoa. you you walk through this wow. line, yeah, and they, tsh, tsh, and so basically, it's not even a needle. It's like a yeah, super stapler. sharp. <laughs> no, no, it's like <laughs> it's compressed air with yeah. the vaccine wow. and it sh- they shoot it into your arm and you did that 30 so you just walk like through this line and they they just give you everything because they got to give you a, a base so they're not asking wow. like what you have or what you no, don't it, have it, and it just, there's just everybody boom. gets it and then like anthrax was a thing yeah like the whole series of anthrax okay. and i just know so, the band but. yeah oh great band yeah so yeah so yeah but yeah but but, but no, the, that's a good yeah. thing to think about. Wow. Like, okay, yeah, you're, you're going in the military. It's like, you know, it's, it's in. You're injecting stuff in your body. So as a Christian, and we're fine, you know, we've talked about Christians being the military, not a problem. But again, thinking, using your mind to think about right. when you're signing that contract, what's going to be happening. Well, and these right? are, but these are drugs that aren't, oh, yeah. aren't, aren't experimental. Yeah. We're talking about an experimental yeah. vaccine that we have no data on. Like Fauci, I heard an interview with him. And uh, he was saying, well, we have no data, so we don't know what's going to happen next. Someone, yeah. you know, guy asked him, so are we going to be able to have weddings this year? And he's like, uh, I don't know. We don't have any data. So, yeah. again, I, I've, like I've seen him say that with other questions, too, about like the mass thing or like I think someone even asked him, like, well, how do you feel that you've changed your position? You know, you said masks don't work and. Now you're saying you better wear two or three, whatever. Right. But it's like, yeah, it's just we have no data. Things are changing and not yeah. my fault. I just Yeah. So love love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and glorify God in your body. And that applies to every area of life. And and again, don't fall into the trap of sacred secular. Right. right? No. No, the way you live your life, right, is under the lordship of Christ. So think about these decisions and recognize that Christ is Lord over your body. It's not a separate thing yeah and just a quick pro tip uh, when you're in your car wear six masks oh so when you go into the store and you're just wearing one uh you feel so free it's amazing oh, okay. it's amazing it. yeah it's yeah. amazing it's right. amazing there so. you go did you try it is that why you have no experience? i don't i don't <laughs> i'm gonna start i'm gonna start you're gonna start okay. i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna start wearing six see how that goes so i have one last thing but so but as we wrap this up yeah. before i go into james 19 and kind of conclude this all. Do you have anything else that you want to kind of talk about when we, I think, in the in the nature of like what what other reasons Christians may not want to get a vaccine or may want to get the vaccine, and and so why should we should extend some charity to each other? No, I think the main thing I just want to just reveal, like every episode we do, right, is this is not a neutral right. thing. Just like anything, I mean, we've talked about education we've talked about i mean i'm just abortion right we've, we've done a bunch yeah. of episodes but i just i mean trying to show a case that when it comes to this controversial topic 
same biblical principles apply, right? We're dealing with our bodies, we're dealing with our minds, we're dealing with science, and we're and God's word is sufficient. So that's the main thing I wanted to to clarify and, and hopefully help people understand, yeah, this does apply to every area of life. But what were you going to bring up? No, no. Over? So I was just going to bring it on home. Be, uh, we're over an hour already, wow. which uh, it's gone yeah. by quick. Yeah. But just a, just an important topic and, and some, one we could talk about uh, forever. But I just really wanted to emphasize, I think, in this episode, episode 20 already. So I really wanted to emphasize in this episode that we should be ex- extending grace to each other and not coming at each other and telling each other, you know, you're in sin, whether you get the vaccine or not get the vaccine. And especially if you're going to do it, like we talk about in Worldview, bring bring a, a biblical epistemology to it, yeah. not some kind of biographical, you know, racial data to try to shame somebody like French did, yeah, right? Exactly. So yeah. um, I just wanted to read James 19 to see us out here. So James 19 says, know this, my... Chapter bel- 1? Yeah, I'm cool. sorry, 119. Just want to make sure. Not chapter 19. Chapter 19. 19. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. Jude chapter chapter 4. There you go. So, uh, all right, James 119. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, um... There are good reasons for people to not get vaccinated. And then there's good reasons that people would get vaccinated um, with this um, coronavirus vaccine. That's not the spiritual problem. That is not the spiritual problem. Exactly. The spiritual problem is when you become self-righteous. Yeah, you're a Pharisee. And start, yeah, Yeah. being a Pharisee. So, Mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, no, yeah. I, I appreciate that, right? Uh, James one nineteen is great. It's like it's just showing patience, slow to hear, listen, right? Slow to speak, slow to wrath, right? Because we want to, in the end, as Christians, if we have disagreements, we want to produce the righteousness of God, which we know comes from God's standard. So again, that listen to both sides and and go back to the Word of God, and again, no need to imply all this other unfortunate things that no, don't need to be there, especially when it comes to color of skin. Right. Right. Nothing. There's no biblical category. Right. When when putting that, especially when it comes to this problem or this issue. So, yeah. And that's I, good. Yeah. James 119 is good for many applications, yep. which is hard for me because I'm very opinionated. <laughs> I really? Been, yes. Okay. I, whoa. I, I, whoa. You know that's that. that's why we we started this whole show. <laughs> My wife just doesn't want to hear it. That's anymore. right. <laughs> go to your man cave there you go. and talk yeah. about your things. There you go. That's cool. it. Cool. Well, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So this was great. So again, we thank you for uh, spending your time uh, listening to us or watching us on YouTube. Remember to go to gab.com backslash worldviews at war. We're uh, it seems like it's working better now. I'm able to post uh, embedded videos and links and uh, like this interview with the doctor is there. So uh, catch us there. And as always, you can get us on Instagram. Yep. You can get us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com, Worldviews at War. Um, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week.